Focused Magnetics has revealed a new bolt concept which claims to be more efficient than any other motor out there. Like a haulback array, it's able to focus its energy directly to the stator, with very little loss. But is this a legitimate claim and are we looking at something that is truly revolutionary? To understand this a little bit more, we have to look at how haulback arrays work. Discovered in 1987, Klaus Haulback figured out that configuring magnets in a certain way can change the magnetic field of the overall array. This means you can have a stronger magnetic field on one side without any loss on the other. There are linear, circular, and even other volumetric array types out there. And this has even evolved into permanent magnet synchronous motors, which future haulback staters. So this concept is nothing really new. And it was found that they are a little bit more complex to build and they have higher heat dissipation. The perfect haulback array motor does not require laminations or back iron. So it can reduce hysteresis losses and reduce the overall weight of the motor with the addition of reaching very high RPMs. The Focus Magnetics motor is very similar to this design, but it would just essentially replace the stator magnets with electromagnetic coils. The magnetic fields are produced from the coils, just like any typical stator, but they are arranged in a certain haulback configuration, allowing for controlled commutating, and there is no doubt that this type of motor could be lighter, smaller in size, and significantly more powerful. But this is where the skepticism comes in, because supposedly they are saying that this is double the efficiency of any electric motor out there. But what motor are they comparing this to? A typical PMSM can have over 90% efficiency. So maybe they're comparing this to a typical brushed motor. This type of motor has coils in the center on the rotor, where a brushless has coils acting as the stator with magnets inside. And there is a considerable difference in efficiency. Efficiency is pretty straightforward, and it's found by dividing mechanical power by electrical power. So you can think of it as this power going in versus power going out. However, there is a load percentage calculation involved too, where there's a certain point where the motor is reached its highest efficiency. All electric motors dissipate some energy as heat and therefore have less than 100% efficiency. Losses are caused by mechanical friction, electrical resistance within the windings, eddy current effects and hysteresis. The most efficient synchronous motors can achieve 99%, but this requires large windings to keep electrical resistance low. Achieving a very high efficiency with a high power to weight ratio means that the resistance needs to be dramatically reduced. This is why superconducting motors are so intriguing, because they can have very high power to weight ratios of 20 kilowatts per kilogram and over 99% efficiency. HDS wires replace the copper coils, and it essentially has zero electrical resistance. Toshiba has already displayed a 2 megawatt motor that is less than 1 cubic meter, but you need cryogenic cooling, so these types of motors are not really practical until we have a real room temperature superconductor. But it was interesting to find that there is actual research into superconductive HTS wire haulback configurations, which can even achieve higher power densities. So even today, we are still really far away from making a conventional perfected electric motor. So far, I have been covering radio flux designs, but there are different topologies including the common axial flux motor which I covered before. Just like a radial, it can have over 90% efficiency. So they can be considerably smaller and lighter for the same amount of power. And that's where the Focus Magnetics motor may be similar in the claim that it could be also smaller and lighter for the same amount of power. But this is not to be confused with efficiency. So I know it was a little bit extreme when comparing to synchronous and superconductive motors, but I just wanted to make the point that it's a little bit vague when you're comparing efficiencies and saying you have double the efficiency of any motor out there. That's just not true at all. But I do like the fact that Focus Magnetics is using a coil tallback configuration rather than permanent magnets because there is more control over the magnetic field displayed by the stator. And there could be other applications to this as well. It definitely could be a very lightweight and powerful motor, maybe something like the Koenigsegg Raxial design. And that's why I really want to see this progress into some sort of prototype. 
But on the other hand, we are still using rare earth metals for the majority of motors out there. And there is another intriguing project which I think is really interesting because maybe Molly is going to figure out how to use haulback configurations in their wireless completely coiled motor. The continuous torque motor from Molly is a very interesting prototype because it's magnet free and utilizes induction. This induces current into the rotor, which energizes the copper windings. It can be up to 95% efficient, but the most important thing is that this can replace permanent magnets and reduce rare earth elements like neodymium. It has inbuilt cooling thanks to the centrifugal action of the rotor, and this allows it to have high loads for extended periods of time. ZF has also built an inductive synchronous motor, and it also has no magnets, and essentially has comparable torque to a PSM with a smaller design. Just like Molly's, it can operate at a very high load, but there will still be questions on how it will be cooled. In theory, a haulback array coiled motor could offer better response with a lighter design, and we're already starting to see magnet-free motors. The question to all this is whether or not the coils can be tuned to offer even higher power densities. And without any rare earth elements, this could be very well the future motor for electric vehicles. But more importantly, I would like to know what you think about all this. So please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.